Hello, I'm Dan, and you're watching Dan Explains. This is my 42nd video. So, as a little homage to sci-fi, I'm going to cover something a bit different from my regular content. And I haven't seen any short, concise videos covering this subject. Two different rockets, NASA's Space Launch System and SpaceX's Starship, currently under development, keep getting called the most powerful rocket in the world. So, what I'd like to talk about today is which rocket is the most powerful rocket in the world. So, which is more powerful? The Space Launch System or Starship? Let me explain. Before people squeal in the comments that there are also other rockets under development besides the Space Launch System, also known as SLS, and Starship, I'd like to say these two rockets are essentially complete. And as of this recording, in August of 2021, both are supposed to fly this year. The other two contenders for the most powerful rocket, the Chinese Long March 9 and the Russian Yenisei, are pretty much paper rockets at the moment. Now that that's out of the way, what's more powerful, the SLS or the Starship? Whenever some news story comes up on either rocket, the writer of the news story says, when complete, the rocket will be the most powerful in the world. If you just look at the numbers, it looks like Starship has the SLS beat hands down. But unfortunately, the answer isn't as clear as simply just picking one. To explain what I mean, I think we should go back to the last two most powerful rockets in the world. The legendary Saturn V that carried man to the moon, and the Soviet version, which did fly but never made it to space, called the N1. Most people in North America and Western Europe usually think the Saturn V is the most powerful rocket ever built, and flown up to this point. If you're from Russia or Eastern Europe, you may believe it's the N1. The funny thing is, both are correct. The difference is the metric that you decide to use to measure it. The Saturn V was the most powerful rocket because it had the largest payload capacity. 140 tons to low Earth orbit compared to the N1's 95 tons to low Earth orbit. However, the N1 was actually capable of pushing much more weight than the Saturn V. So, if you're talking about the power output at any given moment, rather than the total power output, then the N1 was more powerful. It had 10 million pounds of thrust at liftoff compared to the Saturn V's 7.5 million pounds of thrust at liftoff. So yeah, both rockets were the most powerful depending on which metric you want to measure. You also hear both called the biggest rocket ever built because the Saturn V was taller than the N1, but the N1 was wider, at the bottom at least. If you measure that by height, the title has fallen to Starship, which was first fully stacked earlier this month on the 6th of August, since it's a good 30 feet taller than the Saturn V was. I'm not going to go into whether the SLS is taller than Saturn V because it's too complicated to elaborate on here without going over on time. It doesn't matter anyway because any configuration of the SLS is shorter than Starship, which is now the tallest rocket ever built. Okay, so things get more complicated when comparing how powerful the Starship and SLS are. Most of this has to do with how these two different vehicles work. SLS is more for traditional rocket, like the Saturn V was, but based on space shuttle hardware. Almost the entire SLS is expended on every launch. The Starship is made to be fully reused and refuelable once in orbit. There are no plans to build a fully expendable Starship. If there were, Starship would have the SLS beat handily because it could carry 550,000 pounds to low Earth orbit. So, you can already see this is going to be a bit of a apples to oranges comparison here. If we go by total momentary power output at liftoff, 
like they did with the N1, then the Starship will easily be the most powerful rocket ever built. It will have 17 million pounds of thrust at liftoff. The SLS, for comparison, is similar to the Saturn V at about 7.2 million pounds of thrust. For reference, the last most powerful rocket by thrust, the N1, had 10 million pounds of thrust. That means the Starship has a whole N1 worth of thrust beyond the SLS. SLS can get away with this by running the engines for longer. Okay, so what about cargo? Which is how most people these days understand rocket power. Well, this is where things get a little murky. Like I pointed out before, it is a bit apples and oranges here. First off, there are three types of SLS rockets with different capabilities. Block 1, the Block 1B, and the Block 2. And actually, there's actually a couple of different um, Starship rockets, but they should have all the same thrust. They might not all have the same capability, though, so, you know. Then there's a breakdown between the cargo and crewed versions of each SLS. I'm not going to delve into why this is, but it has a lot to do with reusing legacy hardware from the space shuttle era and stepping up incrementally. I'm just going to assume the most capable SLS, which is the Block 2 cargo. Okay, also, I'm going to assume the technically aspirational goals for Starship as well. The early Starship, the first one that's coming out, it's only going to be 100 tons to orbit, while aspirationally, like with Block 2 aspirationally, aspirationally it'll be 150 tons to orbit. So, the SLS can carry almost 300,000 pounds or 130 tons to low Earth orbit. The Starship can carry almost 330,000 pounds or 150 tons to low Earth orbit. Okay, game over. Starship wins. Huh? Oh, there was more to it than that? Oh yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, this isn't where the story ends. We can't forget what these rockets are designed to do. Bring people and cargo to the moon and Mars. The upper stage of SLS is relatively small and light compared to the Starship. The SLS can carry 100,000 pounds to translunar injection, which is the point a spacecraft needs to get to in order to be able to go into orbit around the moon. So. What can Starship carry to translunar injection? Well, nothing. Nada. You heard that right. Starship can't carry any payload to translunar injection. It spent almost all of its fuel just achieving orbit because the upper stage is so big and heavy. In fact, it can't even beat SpaceX's own currently operating Falcon Heavy to geostationary transfer orbit, which can get about 59,000 pounds there compared to Starship's 46,000 pounds. So, the second you try and go beyond low Earth orbit, SLS has enough leftover fuel to carry more cargo and crew. So, you might say, okay, well then, SLS is more powerful when bringing stuff beyond low Earth orbit, but Starship is more powerful when getting things to low Earth orbit. With the comparison I just did, which is about as apples to apples as I can get, it's yes. But, wait a second, didn't I just say earlier that Starship is being built to bring stuff to the moon and Mars? Didn't NASA just select the Starship to be the lander to return humans to the moon? What are they going to do? Throw a Starship on the upper stage of an SLS or something? Um. Okay, let's not go there, but what gives? Well, remember I mentioned earlier it could carry more fully expended. It could definitely beat the SLS that way, but like I said, it's not intended to be used that way and it probably never will be used that way. In fact, the way it's designed, it won't need to be. So instead of making Starship more of an apple to compare to SLS, Let's compare it the way it was intended to be used. And this is where Starship starts to look a lot more like an orange and a lot less like an apple. 
This is because starships are meant to be refueled in low Earth orbit by purpose-built tanker starships. SpaceX can get away with this without incurring a huge cost because the starships, including the tankers, are fully reusable. With refueling, starships can get a whopping 440,000 pounds to the surface of the moon. That's almost four times what SLS can get to translunar injection, and more than 10 times what SLS can get to the surface of the moon. So, when you hear someone say that SLS is going to be the most powerful rocket flying when it finally takes off later this year, know that it will only be true if they launch before Starship. Besides that, SLS will still be less capable than even the Saturn V, which had more thrust and could carry 10 more tons than even the most optimistic SLS Block II, which may never even fly. So, to answer the question, as long as everything goes well enough in the next few months, not only will Starship be more powerful than the SLS, it will be the most powerful rocket ever built. If you like this video, please press the like button. Subscribe to my channel and ding the bell to get notified when I post new videos. Also, please support me on Patreon, link in the description. The more people support me, the more time I can dedicate to making videos like this one. So, until next time, have a great week. Thank you.